नमस्कार 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 अस्मी भीम प्रसाद सारपेटा स्टूडेंट अफ एम फिल इन इंग्लिश एजुकेशन सेकेंड सेमिस्टर फ्रम द नेपाल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी ललितपुर नेपाल इन दिस शर्ट प्रेजेंटेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फंक्शनल थियोरीज एक्स टाइप ट्रांसलेसनल एक्शन एंड स्कोपस थ्योरी दिस इज द वेरी यूजफुल इन रिलेवेंट टॉपिक रिगार्डिंग द ट्रांसलेसन स्टडीज एंड स्पेशली दिस शॉर्ट प्रेजेंटेशन इज मेड फॉर द पार्शियल फुलफिलमेंट ऑफ द इंटरनल असेसमेंट ऑफ सेमिनार ऑन ट्रांसलेसन स्टडीज सो विदाउट एनी डिले आई वुड लाइक टू इंटर in the session of a presentation uh, if you have some queries some uh, problems regarding my presentations please write in the comment box below uh, at first i would like to share some uh, outline of the presentations these are the outlines uh, of this presentation First of all, uh, I will discuss about the short introduction of the functional theories, functional approach uh, of the translations. Uh, after that, uh, one functional approach is text type approach. I will go through this uh, text type approach in detail. Uh, after that, uh, Marisnell uh, on by is integrated approach. I will go. in detail regarding the this integrated approach after that whole uh, mentor is trans translatorial action model i will discuss about this and lastly uh, i will conclude my presentations talking in scopus theory which is also a functional types of the theories regarding translations yes uh introductions while talking about the functional uh, theories functional theories of uh, translations while talking about the functional theories of translations i I want to talk about the short historical background why the functional uh, approaches came into the existence in the field of the translations when the static linguistic uh, typology of the translations move away uh, during the 1970s or 1980s at that time some functional uh, and communicative approaches of the translations has Uh, emerged so uh, in this type of the functional approaches katharina rice text types approach is the one type of the approach so basically this type of the functional theories uh, functional approaches of the translation uh, focus to the functional aspect or communicative aspect uh, of the text or of the source text or target text basically what is the intended meaning that is the major concerns of uh, translations uh, according to the functional approach here here katharina ressis text type approach is one of the uh, most popular approach of the functional approach of the translations basically this uh, text type approach focuses to the systematizing the assessment of the translation according to the text text type and the functions yes the focus text type approach basically focuses to the assessment of the translation yes translations on the basis of the types of the text and their functions in the text 
The main, main concern of the text type approach is that translation should be done on the basis of the text types. Let me move the slides. Yes, uh, I'm talking about the text types according to the races 1971. Uh, here are some types of the text and their purposes, uh, which should be considered uh, by the translator while translating from ST to TT. Here ST stands for the source text and TT stands for the target text. Uh, this uh, first uh, here uh, informative informative report sorry informative type of the text one type of the text is informative. Uh, example might be report uh, some lectures from brochures etc are the informative text which gives informations uh, second type of the text are expressive text uh, for example poems plays biography etc are the expressive text and operative text this type of the text uh, mostly include uh, advertisement uh, electoral electoral speech etc so on the basis of the function of such type of the text the translator should be translated source text into the target text here in the informative text the language functions uh, language functions are informative which are full of the facts data and objects then in expressive type of the text uh, senders attitudes are mostly included then in operative type of the text the uh, writers appeal to the text to the receivers yes appellative type of the functions uh, can be found in the operative text and expressive functions can be found in the expressive type of the text in Informative functions can we find the find in the informative text. While talking about the language dimension of, of these three te text, uh, in informative text, uh, logical type of the language uh, is included. It is included. Uh, then, in the expressive type of the text, aesthetic language is decorated. Then, in operative type of the Text language is dialogue, more dialogue to appeal the readers. Similarly, what is the focus of that text? In, in the informative text focus to the content. Basically, uh, content it focused due, because its main function is providing the facts, data, objects, etc. Those type of the uh, brochures, reports, and the focus of the expressive text is form for example poems plays always oriented poems plays and biographies are always oriented to focus the form rather than the content and the operative uh, type of the text or text always focus to the appellative uh, way they want to uh, or their intention is to appeal the readers then um, informative text uh, while translating the informative text the target text should be translate referential content yes the while trans the translator the translator should translate informative text being concerned with the referential context it means in which context that text is written or in which context the translator is going to translate or 
which which readers which type what type of the readers are the actual reader of that uh, target text this should be focused you know when talking about the expressive uh, text the translator should translate translate aesthetic call that should be decorated in terms of the language in while translating operative type of the text the translate the translator should elicit the desired responses then what is the translator translation methods of this three type of the text the informative type of the text is trans translated using plain prose explicit explicit as required that an expressive type of the text are translated uh, basically identifying method uh, adopt perspective of the source text and uh, operative type of the text are translated using the adaptive type of the methods uh, while talking about the um, while talking about the text type approach in the translation uh, these are the criteria of the adequacy of the target text after translating uh, the source text on the basis of the text type that i discussed in my previous slides we can know whether this the target text is suitable or not according to the communicative or functional purposes for that we should assess that target text uh, using this type of the indicators or this type of the points here we can assess that uh, target text uh, through the intralinguistic criteria such as here intralinguistic means uh, semantic lexical grammatical features these are the uh, key terms which determine whether the est is uh, translated into tt perfectly or not then similarly we can use the extra linguistic criteria this include the situation in which the est written in for which the tt translated then subject field in which time the est is written and in which time for which time the translator is translating the est in place these are the extra linguistic criteria we can use to find out the adequacy of the uh, target text while translating the text type papers then application of the criteria according to the text type i already uh, discussed about the text types and their applications in my previous slides yes occasion where the text where the target text function differs from the source text function yes there might be several occasions uh, in in term of the different type of the text here i want to give a example jonathan swift had written gulliver gulliver's travels it is a most famous to work then in past this type of this gulliver travels is used to read from the satirical eye of the eye for the political scenario at that time but at present jonathan swift gulliver travels uh, is is reading just for the entertainment not for that uh, satirical purposes so occasion might be different according to the time place situation etc so these are the criteria which we can use to assess the adequacy of the target text uh, according to the text type approaches uh, second functional approach is integrated approach this approach is proposed this approach is advocated by the marisnel on by on by and this approach attempt to integrate a wide varieties of the different linguistic and literary concept here this is the main concept while translating 
the text the translation should be integrated wide varieties of the different linguistic and literary concepts in an integrated approach yes different type of the linguistic items and different type of the literary con concepts should be considered while the translating text here uh, this type of the integrated approach uh, integrates cultural history first the cultural history of the source text first the literary studies of that source text what is the legal condition of that source text and what what is the economical economical aspect of that uh, source text this should be in, incorporated in, incorporated while translating each other then similarly uh, a stratification model from the most general to the most particular yes this type of the approach is also called the stratificational model here is stratificational mean distributed or diversity is in the methods plurality so uh, in this methods marisnel uh, on by advocates that the translation should include varieties of the elements uh, in the translation that might be cultural that might be literary that might be legal economical sector should be considered while translating the text uh, another is the translatorial action model it was advocated by the hall mandatory uh, basically this functional approach translatorial action model this is one type of the model uh, this type of the translation method approach is purpose driven it is always outcome oriented for the human interaction yes its major concern is the it the source text is translated into the target text for the human interaction this is the main concern of that of this action model translator or action model model the process of the translation involves the intercultural transfer of the message transmitter compounds yes intercultural transfer one culture to another culture or culture to culture intercultural transfer the culture should be transfer while translating the text the major concern of the translatorial action research here i would like to uh, say a quotation by hall madra 1984 uh, compounds is not about the translating words is yes, only not translating words translation does not include only translating sentences or text but it is but it is in every case about the guiding the intended cooperative over cultural barriers enabling functionally oriented communication yes every cultural barrier ba barriers are barriers should be included in the um, target text so translating the text is not just uh, translating the word translating the sentence into target language but uh, also the transfer transfer it's the transferring of the cultural barriers cultural gaps cultural entities etc uh yes uh, interlingual translation is uh, tra translatorial action from the source text and it is a communicative process yes translation we know that translation is the communicative process so the translation translator does the task of communicative communicative in term of that uh, uh, the translator gives messages provide the information about the source text into the target text that's why it's communicative process yes uh, this type of the the in the translatorial action approach several roles are played by the trans by the different type of the function authorities so first is the initi initiator initiator means who needs the translation here uh, 
who needs the translations then another is the commissioner who contract the translator yes commissioner means uh, the persons who contracts the translator the source text provider producer who writes the original text or source text the text type the target text producer who translate the source text translator here producer means translator then the target text user who uses the target text the target text uh, receiver final recipient recipient of the target text this type of this type of the roles are played in whole translatorial action approach so all this should be incorporated in the process of the translation similarly uh, in the production of the target text the source text is analyzed only for its construction and function two type of the categories is given there categories are given there relevant feature are described uh, according to the 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 source text relevant feature should be categorized on the basis of the content contains uh, one is the content content should be structured into the factual information yes there should be factual information uh, in the target text overall communicative strategy yes there should be included the overall communicative strategy while translating into the target text and another is the form form should be structured into the target text terminology several type of the terminology are should be uh, terminologies should be formed accordingly cohesive element different type of the cohesive elements are elements should be uh, included in the target text this content and form are the key terms while translating into uh, the target text using the translatorial action approach last uh, the scopus theory which is very useful in the functional uh, way of the translations here scopus means aim or purpose scopus is the greek word is it denotes aim or purpose the this type of the scopus theory was uh, uh, introduced by the hans j bomir and katharina resis these are the advocates of that scopus theory in the translation main focus of this scopus theory is the purpose of the translations the translation should be uh, focus what is the purpose of the translation purpose might be academic purpose might be uh, purpose might be purpose might be purpose might be academic purpose might be educational purpose might be business sector the translation should be aware about the purpose of the translating text the purpose determines the method and strategy yes translate translation methods and strategies are determined by the what is the purpose of the translations so the translation should be aware about the purpose which directly at affect or directly uh, determine the methods and strategies in the text of the translation the main aim of this scopus theory is to produce a functionally adequate result this is the major concept functionally adequate results functionally sufficient results uh, is focused the result is the target text or translatum this term are used by the bomir uh, so result is the main major concept in conclusion why the source text need translations in the function aspected of the target text are crucial yes most important is this why the source text needs needs translation means reason reason behind the translations and function aspected of the target text are crucial what are the functions expected by the target text target audience this is the crucial things in the scopus theory
These all are the uh, major concerns. So, rules of the Scopus theory. The writers uh, describes describes about some rules uh, while translating using the Scopus theory, Scopus approach. The translatum or translator is determined by this Scopus. Its purpose should be determined by the purpose. Uh, target text is an offer of information in a target cultures and target language concerning an offer of information in a source cultures and target source languages yes source cultures and source languages should be considered for uh, while translating the text the target text does not initiate an offer of the information in a clearly reversible way yes there is no clear way of the representing some elements initiates target text must be internally coherent say that be coherence rule should be apply while translating the text using the scopus theory rules should be followed target text must be coherent with the source text according to the source text the fidelity rules these are called the fidelity rules target text should be followed the rules of the source text okay. these above five rules stand in a hierarchical order there should be hierarchical order if the chronology is breakdown the the process of the translation might be affect so these five rules stand in a hierarchical order with the spoke scope rules predominating yes the rules of the Spokes are predominating, so the editor should be uh, concerned with these five rules which are given in here while translating the source text into the target text. This is the main materials and the main reference that I used to that I used to uh, prepare this short presentations. Thank you very much. Uh, here are here might be some mistakes, some suggestions. So please write into the comment box. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone.